Hello and welcome to White Threads Floss Tube number 12. Today I will show you the piece of embroidery that I'm wearing and I have two embroidered sampler cushions to show you. So first of all, onto the embroidery that I'm wearing today. It's another pendant. This is my Vitsum pendant. Vitsum, Vit, H-V-I-T means white. Som means seam or stitching. So it means white stitching. Um, it's a form of white work from Norway. It's like Hardanger, but it doesn't have any cut work. So it can be a little bit more achievable for those people who find cutting threads extremely scary. This is a kit that I have available and you can find it on my website. The details you can find down below if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're watching it via my uh, blog, you can also find the details just down below. Um, I always try to have the notes that are useful to you down below so that there is information there at your fingertips. Over the last few days on Facebook and on my blog, I've been showing off some of my students' work from my Jardin de Fleurs class that I ran a couple of times at the Cool Global Inn in Sydney last year. Uh, these have been extremely popular posts, and so I thought that today I would show you the original cushions that I made and tell you a little bit of the story behind it. So when I lived in Sydney last year, and the year before, you know, up to last year. I uh, worked at the Krill Gobelin for a few years. The Krill Gobelin is a specialist needle workshop in Kalara in Sydney and it's a beautiful shop and I loved working there. Um, so Julie, the owner, and I were talking about classes that I could run for them because I did run, I did have quite a few classes there um, and she wanted to do a sampler class uh, so that people could learn how to do embroidery and I I thought that that was a really great idea. I love teaching embroidery stitches. And so I thought about how I might do that. Now, if you know anything about my work, you'll notice that if I've ever done samplers, they're not really your stock standard sampler. Um, they're not in cross stitch generally. And so my idea of a sampler is a sampler, a sample of stitchings or patterns or that sort of thing. And so a sampler doesn't need to look like lines of stitches or blocks of stitches. It can actually be quite, I mean, samplers are beautiful, but my samplers that I had in mind are going to be quite beautiful in a different way. And so I came up with this design. So this is a cushion. I decided that neutrals would be really good for it. Um, and there are about 30, just over 30 different stitches on this cushion. But my idea was that the sampler would be a lot more decorative um, than, well not more decorative, just decorative in a different way than other samplers often are. I tried as I was designing to choose threads that would give students a real experience of things that they hadn't necessarily used before. So there's pearl cotton on here in different thicknesses, there's embroidery floss, there are over dyed threads, there is cruel wool, there's cotton abroder, there's linen thread. Uh, was there anything else? No, that might have been it. So I wanted to not only teach them different stitches, but get them um, trying new threads that they may not have tried before. Uh, the one thing that I wanted to um, keep in mind was that as a cushion, people would probably want to... Um, wash this at some stage so all of the threads needed to be colour fast. So my over dyed, thread, over -dyed threads that I've used um, are ones that are regarded as being colour fast um, and that's just a way to be a little bit safer about using coloured threads on something that you're going to wash. You see me talking about coloured threads with hesitation like that, it's because I'm a white worker. <laughs> so all of my threads are white and you can wash them and it's fine because the white isn't going to wash out. Whereas colour is that little bit more scary for me. <laughs> it's just me being a white worker. Um, so you can see that there are lots of different stitches on here used in different ways. Um, one of the things that I love doing and that I did a lot when I was working on my stitch dictionaries, the left-handed embroiderer's companion and the right-handed embroiderer's companion, was that I tried to work some of the stitches in circles. Um, and that can add quite a bit of difficulty and you can see that there's quite a few stitches here worked in circles. Um, so that adds a different dimension than if you were doing it on a straight line. Um, when I was designing this, um, 
one of the things that I think about when designing is that I want areas that are solid, areas that are open, areas that are filled, areas that are not filled, areas that look open and lacy, and you just try and have balance. So here, this is a very heavy, the inside's a lot less heavy. Um, this is an outlined one, so right next to that I didn't want another one that had an outline around the edge. I wanted something that was more inward focused. Um, so always for me it's a question of trying to get balance, not in just um, the texture of the stitches and the look of the stitches but the colours as well. So I didn't want to have an area where there was too much green or an area where there was too much brown. Um, so there's so much to think about when you're designing and I think I hope that this has worked out quite well. The fact that it's been quite so popular tells me that people have liked it a lot. On the back of my cushion, um, I used some beautiful fine French linen fabric from Fine French Linen Australia. Um, and these are gorgeous fabrics. She still does have them available. I will put her information down below so that if you're interested in these fabrics, you can use them too. But they're beautiful, beautiful to stitch with and beautiful to look at. Um, so. That's the neutrals version. After I'd done the neutrals one, Julie, the owner of the shop, said to me, um, it'd be really nice to have it in another colourway as well. Um, my immediate thought went to red because I love red. Um, she suggested blues. So it ended up being blues, and this is the blues version that you can see. Um, both of them have been extremely popular. Uh, and this does look quite different than the other one. It's a bit more contrasty because the dark blues contrast a lot with the lighter blues um, and again I think it turned out quite well so it's exactly the same design exactly the same stitches in the same places but this has got the different colors instead on the back of this once again I use fine French linen fabric um, that's not to say that it's linen fabric it's cotton but her business name is fine French linens um, and so this is the same design as the other one sorry I'll just show you both, um, different colourways, so they're beautiful fabrics. Oh, sorry, just reorganising myself here. Um, so I entered these in the local show here. We moved to a country town about this time last year called Walker, which is in the New South, in a, it's a regional area, well, it's a, it's a town in rural New South Wales. It's about halfway between Brisbane and Sydney, and we have a population, I think it's about 1,500, it's a little town, and we are, we are absolutely loving living here. Um, once a year they have their agricultural show, so the Walker show was on in um, March, just before social isolation started happening, the shutdown sort of stuff. So ours was, I think, pretty much the last agricultural show that made it in before the shutdown. So we felt very, very fortunate that we were able to get ours done. Um, I entered both of these cushions in the show and the neutrals one in its section got first prize and the blues one in its section got second prize. Um, so that was lovely. I really enjoyed entering things in the show. Um, it seems like it's a really big deal here. It'd be, in the weeks beforehand, everyone was saying to everyone else, so what are you putting in the show? And so I thought, well, I've got lots of things I could put in the show. It would be nice to um, take part in the community in that way. And so it was really enjoyable to put my things in, but also to see everyone else's gorgeous work. It was a really enjoyable, enjoyable community time. Uh, we saw so many people that we knew. We've only been here a year, but it was a really nice day to be able to catch up with people and see everyone. And for a town that's been struggling with drought for many years and then over the Christmas period um, with the fires nearby as well and now with the shutdown, well, it hadn't happened yet at that stage, this is a, a town um, that has been through a lot. And to be able to get together like that and do a really com lovely community thing was a really good thing for the town. Um, so... I don't think there's anything else that I needed to show you today. Oh, those two cushions. Um, the Krill Gobelin and I have worked together in the past to put them out as kits. And Julie called me up the other day and said, I think we need to do another batch. So we are working on putting another batch of kits together. If you are interested in purchasing one, please contact Julie at the shop. I will include the details 
down below so that you can contact her and get yourself put on the list of people who are interested in purchasing. That way it'll give us an idea of how many kits that we need to put together and it will mean that there's one ready for you when they are ready. So thanks very much for spending this time with me today. I hope that you are enjoying your stitching, keeping safe and well and we'll get through this together. Thanks very much. Bye.